What's going on, y'all, man? It's official Dre live, bro. And as y'all see, I got a, you know, I got a whole little, you know, I got a reaction. How did the NBA let this happen? This is a Jimmy High Roller video, man, and you know his content is really interesting. So this is my first reaction in like a little while. So anyways, if y'all do enjoy this type of content, man, subscribe to the channel. Links to everything uh, down in the description. You feel me to the Twitch, uh, my socials, etc. and so forth, man. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on with this video. About a month since the last NBA game was concluded oh, oh, in the sure NBA show, And now that we've had some time to really think about what unfolded last season, let's take a look at some of the more memorable moments of the 2019-2020 NBA season. Never mind, the NBA made an executive decision to start the season in five weeks, so here we go. These boys just got off the court. These boys haven't played in months. So how is the NBA going to make its return for the 2020-2021 season, and who exactly will benefit from this unorthodox comeback? Well, for starters, the league announced last week that this upcoming season will be starting on December 22nd with a 72-game season and no fans in attendance. After losing $1.5 billion in revenue last season due to COVID-related restrictions, the NBA is approaching its 2021 season with caution. The league is currently trying to figure out how to generate the most revenue possible while still keeping everyone safe and following all protocols. Current projections suggest that if the NBA is unable to bring back fans for the entire 2021 season, which seems to be the case at the moment, the league will be facing a $4 billion loss in revenue. That's billion. That's a lot of money being lost, man. Now, nobody once again expected this to happen. So, I mean, the NBA, it's the, it's the league. It's going to bounce back for this, obviously. They're going to get their money back, you know. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do or how, what they come up with in the next season, the next few seasons after this. So, 72 games, though. That's tough. With a B, and you don't need to be an expert in finances to understand the implications that this will have on the salary cap, free agency, the luxury tax, and just about every other facet of the league. The alternative schedule, which seems less likely with each passing day, would have the NBA starting in mid-January and ending late into the summer, which means the league would be competing with the Summer Olympics, college football, the NFL, and potentially the MLB. And up to this point, trying to compete with the NFL for viewers' attention has been a massive wake-up call for the NBA. I mean, it's bad. As much as I love the NBA, the league just cannot compete with the NFL in terms of viewers. Game six of the finals this season, a winner go home, all or nothing, last game of the season, fell on a Sunday. And that same Sunday, every single nationally televised NFL game drew in far more views than the NBA Finals. Bro, because the NBA doesn't compete with these brands normally. So now they have to get these games out, bro. That's why the views and the ratings is down. Come on now. In fact, since the NBA began keeping track of viewership on a game-to-game -game basis in the 80s, oh my God. least watched Finals games all came this season, averaging just under 7.5 million viewers per game. But we didn't have life of COVID until now. Until you consider the fact that in 1998, the Bulls versus Jazz final series averaged 29 million viewers per game. So to put it short, the NBA will do everything in its power to avoid coinciding with the NFL season. Thus, they have all the more incentive to push for a December start date as opposed to a later one. But even after $1.5 billion in revenue loss last season, the league is still, believe it or not, thriving. Last season, despite all the major obstacles the NBA had to overcome, the league still generated $8.3 billion, twice as much as it did just nine years ago. The league has rapidly expanded over the last five years thanks to Adam Silver and league executives making huge efforts to spread the NBA's reach around the globe. So, if you've ever wondered why players like Nicholas Batum, Chandler Parsons, and Otto Porter are making more money than a prime Kobe Bryant, it's because the league as a whole is making vastly more money than it did 13 years ago. And yes, Kobe's salary is adjusted for inflation. Before factoring inflation, this entire chart is just painful to look at. But the start date of December 22nd is far more important than you may think. 
If you are a fan of the NBA, then you know that there are specific must-watch days throughout the NBA season. Opening day, the All-Star Game, the Finals, and of course, Christmas Day. Some of the most memorable moments in league history took place on Christmas, and fans are always ready to tune in on this special day. In 2015, the Cavaliers vs. Warriors Christmas game drew in over 11 million viewers. And Sound about right, you know, Cleveland won. In comparison, the average regular season game that season... I believe Cleveland won. Believe. Probably am wrong. ...attracted about 2 million viewers. In fact, Christmas Day games in 2011 drew on average more viewers than Game 3 of the Finals this season. Now, take a wild guess at when the 2011 NBA season started. Bingo. The most lucrative day in regular season history was on Christmas Day in 2011, which was also opening day that season due to the lockout. The NBA knows if they miss this day, they are potentially missing out on the most exciting and profitable day of the entire season, and the league will do everything in its power to get the season going by this date. But with interest and ratings for the NBA plummeting last season, many critics are skeptical that the league will be capable of returning to a somewhat normal and profitable season. In fact, many critics believe that the NBA, for many illegitimate reasons, was the only sport to suffer a huge hit from COVID. But this was far from the case. The NHL Stanley Cup saw a drop of 61% in viewership last season. The US Open was down 56% from last year. The MLB saw a drop of as much as 44% in viewership compared to the previous season. Here's a graphic showing how nearly every major American sport has seen a massive drop in viewership this last year. Oh my every God. sport has suffered from not only COVID. This is kind of an interesting graph to look at, even though I don't really understand the graph as he's explaining it, but it's it shows like the uh, the massive effect that this virus has had. That's, that's tough, bro. Odd schedules that fans are still adjusting to. So, with the league returning just 10 weeks after the conclusion of the finals, how will teams and players have to adjust, and who exactly benefits from this extremely unusual circumstance? Well, teams that made deep run in the playoffs last season are basically getting shafted, and some players are not happy about it. Most off-seasons last about 120 days, which means by the time the season starts on December 22nd, half of the league will already have a full off-season under their belt, and the bottom six teams in the league will have not seen an NBA game in nine months, or about two and a half off-seasons worth of days. Even more startling is how long it's been since we've seen some NBA stars. By the time the season returns, it'll have been over a year and a half since we last saw Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson play. Carl Anthony Towns will be back after not playing for over 10 months. Kyrie Irving will be back after nearly 11 months. Blake Griffin will make his return after an entire year of not playing. And then, there's the king of hiatus. The emperor of the offseason. The mogul of missed time. My man John Wall who went from an NBA All-Star to not playing an NBA game for two whole years. Two years. Keep in mind, the average NBA offseason lasts just 120 days. These guys are basically coming out of a brief retirement. Meanwhile, the Heat, the Lakers, and a 35-year-old LeBron are forced to bounce back from a prolonged season in just 72 days. Well, at least for LeBron, not really. Since LeBron has came out and said that with the season starting so soon, he will be, quote, cherry picking the whole first half of the season. Of course, this was said jokingly, but shoot, I ain't mad at him. Can you imagine if, let's say, Michael Jordan said that he would take some time off to recoup and reset after years of long seasons? Oh, that's right. But seriously. Teams like the Lakers, Heat, Celtics, and Nuggets, as well as other teams that made deep runs in the playoffs last season, are really getting the short end of the stick here. How will a early season matchup featuring a tired Lakers team versus a rejuvenated Warriors team with a fresh Stephen Curry and a well-rested and recovered Klay Thompson play out? How will the Miami Heat hold up? Does he not know Klay Thompson? Is this is probably a, never mind, this is probably an old video. January against a Nets team that has two superstars with fresh legs and a hunger to reclaim greatness. These are all completely new and 
unforeseen circumstances that may change the landscape of the 2021 season. One of the lesser discussed aspects of this rush start date revolves around the drafts and the incoming rookies. Rookies usually wow. get four months to work out with their teams, adjust to the physicality and pace of the NBA play, and learn about their team's system. But with the 2020 NBA draft scheduled to take place on November 18th, incoming rookies will have a month before the start of the season to get up to speed and make the leap. Now, as much as I appreciate LaMelo Ball's game, I don't know how many 30-foot bombs five seconds into the shot clock I can take before I lose my mind. But I would not be surprised if this upcoming rookie class struggles throughout the season due to their lack of prep time. The jump from college basketball or overseas leagues to the NBA is massive. And as if that transition wasn't difficult enough, these young men are going to be thrown right into the lion's den with little to no adjustment. But just like everyone else in the league, these rookies will have to work with what they got. An odd and surprisingly early start date to a season that may or may not go as planned. But with the way the NBA swiftly handled the bubble in Orlando, I have no doubts that this upcoming season will be amazing. The league now has more parity than it's had in years. The Lakers, Clippers, Bucks, Nuggets, Warriors, Celtics, Heat, Nets, they all have a shot this next season. And lucky for us, we are just five short weeks away from witnessing this epic season go down. Hope you all enjoy, and as always, until next time. Anyways, man, that's the video, bro. That's that's so interesting to hear, yo. Just, I I really do want to know how this NBA season is gonna play out, man. We already, man. LeBron, I don't I don't know, man. Anyway, bro, if y'all did enjoy the video, if y'all did enjoy this reaction, man, feel me, hit me up, feel me. All links to everything is in the description, man. You feel me? It's a video on the screen, bro. Keep enjoying my content. Keep watching my videos, man. Anyway, till next time, fool. Take care of yourself.